Hello everyone, my name is Nick, and welcome if you're new. I'm really excited about today's video because we're going to be replanting my vertical garden. So last year, I teamed up with the folks at Wally Grow to do a video of me installing their vertical garden, the Wally Grow Eco, in my home. I have it here in my living room, and I can say after a year, I genuinely love the product, non-sponsored, I should say. It is such a wonderful addition to my living room, and every time new people come into my house, they always point it out, and they're like, oh my god, that's so cool. So I genuinely love the product. However, the area where I chose to install my Wally Grows is in considerably low light specifically because it's pretty high up on a wall. And I chose to use two specific plants when I planted it up originally. So I used regular Golden Pothos and I used the Marble Queen Pothos. The Golden Pothos are growing swimmingly. They look incredible and they're just really starting to cascade all over the place. However, the Marble Queen Pothos, I think it's a little too low light for them and they are just not thriving whatsoever. Specifically lately, things have just kind of taken a turn for the worse. So I thought it would be a very appropriate time to go ahead and replant my vertical garden. And I actually reached out to the folks at Wally Grow when I decided to do this video to see if they would be willing to supply a discount code to my followers in case you guys wanted to purchase this product. So you can use my code phillyfoliage 15 over the next two weeks from September 9th to September 23rd to get 15% off your Wally Grows if you choose to do so. So before we get started with the planting, I actually went plant shopping this morning to get a bunch of plants for the planting. So we're going to have to do a mini plant haul. So let's go ahead and get started with the plant haul. So this morning I went plant shopping to prep for my planting today. So I went to, of course, my work urban jungle and I got a nice little plant haul for us. As I had mentioned, all of these plants are extremely low light plants for the most part. There are a few that I'm like, eh, maybe they'll work, maybe they won't, but I figured I would give it a try because there's a lot of color going on, as you will see. And I should first mention, we are going to be reusing the Golden Pothos that is already in the Wally Grow Ecos, and I was recently repotting one of my Hartley Philodendrons, and I took off a few of the vines, or actually quite a chunk, really, that we can be using in the planting as well, that we can either keep as is or break up into one or two pieces, so, We'll see. The first plant that I have today is this beautiful Dracaena bicolor. So this is a Dracaena that would turn into a tree, but I just really loved the color and how upright it is, specifically if I just have some like pothos like trailing down the front. So I thought this would be some really good color. So we have this Dracaena bicolor, and I also got this uh, spider bonnie plant, bonnie spider, I don't know how you guys say it, but it's the, the curly version of the spider plant. So I thought this would also be really nice, especially when it shoots off its babies. Now this is one of the ones I'm kind of worried that it might not be bright enough light, but it's touch and go, so we'll give it a try. If not, it's not that big of a sacrifice, obviously, so I'm just gonna give it a try. And I also have this Philodendron Brazil. I figured this would kind of contrast well with the regular Hartley Philodendron that I have, although it's a little bit smaller, obviously. It really does have a really nice pop of color. And then, of course, if I'm doing anything that involves trailing plants, or plants in general, I have to use some Scindapsis Pictus, so I got two of them today. I was kind of hoping, admittedly, that in my delivery I would get some of the large leaf Scindapsis so I could get one of each, but they only had the regular ones, so I picked out some nice voluptuous ones for being in a four inch pot. So these are gonna look really nice in there, and they should do pretty well if I am not mistaken. And moving into some of the more colorful things that I have, I have this beautiful, pink syngonium. Now somebody I know has one of these growing in a few feet away from their east facing window and it seems to be growing really well and keeping that pink color. So I'm thinking six feet or so away from this west facing window will probably do it so good. So I'm probably going to make sure I put this one in the spot that's going to receive the most light. And then I also have this is just a little cutting of a Siam aglianema that's got some really nice red outlines that could really be a nice pop of color. And I also have two more ugly names. So this one is called Wintry Winehouse, I believe. Yeah, Wintry Winehouse. So I figured this would be really nice to look up at. So if I put this on the top, it'd be really nice to see this white pattern. And I also thought that this one this Aglianema Ruby, it says, although I've also heard this one as Aglianema Wishes, would look really, really good on the top. And I should say my coworker Sue, who's an incredible designer, helped me out with picking out all these plants. Without her incredible eye for design, who knows what this project would end up looking like. So I gotta do a shout out to Sue for being an absolute angel and helping me out. All right, that is all of the plants that I have for the planting today. So let's pull these Wally Grows off the wall and get started. So step one is to make sure my roommate is not home because I'm going to be making a horrible mess. So that is check, and two is to remove all of my existing plants from the Wally Grow. So as I said, the Golden Pothos are really looking quite incredible. However, the Marble Queens are not looking so hot. 
Admittedly, I think I underwatered this particular one pretty harshly. But anyway, it wasn't looking so hot anyway, so it's time to replant these. So we are just going to dump the soil out. <sighs> Returning these bags to work. All right, so I'm just gonna get rid of the Marble Queens entirely. However, I'm going to, actually I'm probably going to keep that one Marble Queen and try to rehab it, but that one is obviously trash. But we're going to definitely separate the Golden Pothos out. So I'm going to probably gingerly dump it out on the surface right here as we begin to make a mess. Oh wow, okay. So, and now, oh, ooh, some really good roots here, I will say. Wow. Okay, so this is going to be pretty easy to separate. I should probably get my bag that I'm sorry work. I'm going to make a little mess out of it. I'll give it back though, I promise. We are going to be using my standard mix, which is typically about two parts soil to one part perlite. So I do have some more soil and perlite with me today. I'm not just working with this. But yeah, that's going to be our mix. And I'm going to make sure to use a lot of perlite because while the Wally Groves breathe, because they have these holes at the front, which is kind of hard to see, uh, they don't drain from the bottom. So it's not really an issue because they have these slots in the back and you water them from the bottom. So you they suck up the water and it's usually, I haven't had the issue of overwatering them, but I still want to be mindful of that. So I am going to use a considerable amount of perlite in my mix to make sure to keep everything well aerated. I just bought the shirt to me. I have no idea why I showered before filming this video. This Marble Queen isn't looking as bad, but it's still just not looking so great. It's definitely underwatered, but I'll probably just move it into a plastic pot and do a little bit of rehab. So that'll be something for later on today. Wow, really, really healthy roots on these golden pothos and the dirt is like so dry because I must have been neglecting these knowing this video is coming up. So I will definitely pay a little bit closer attention to these plants in the future. However, I love how drought tolerant golden pothos is and I did kind of purposely choose some more drought tolerant plants for my planting today. Step three would be to, <sighs> step three would be to properly get these slots in here because apparently I did not do so the first time with the way it fell out so I think I think we're good okay so I'm not going to clean them out completely because it's a little too tedious so I'll get rid of some of this extra soil but I am planting the plants that were already in here back in so I'm not worried about like any diseases like that and I'm not worried about it spreading to my new plants because there as far as my knowledge goes there was no disease, diseases or anything bad going on other than mistreatment apparently and some lack of light so let's go ahead and get started with the planting before we actually physically plant we're going to kind of just like design what we have going on so we'll start off with getting an eye for this guy so i was really excited this is kind of the plant admittedly that made me want to do this because we got them in at work and they were like sitting up on a shelf and i was just like oh my god that looks so good looking up at it so it's like looking down at it so i was like i would love to have that in my vertical garden so that got me thinking, why not repot some of my pothos in there? And obviously this is not going to have the full effect right now with me holding it right there. But you get what I'm saying. We're going to have a really, really nice assortment. And I'm so excited to see what the wall is going to look like when we are all finished. So I think I'm going to have some nice pothos vines coming down on the left. And then I'm going to include the aglionema in the center. And I'm trying to decide what I want on the left. I'm thinking... This might be a good time for some silver pothos. Although it could be time for some phyllo, but I'm really liking the way this looks, honestly. This is a really nice color combo. So we'll set this one aside. We're not gonna plan it all up right yet. We're gonna plan first because we gotta plan first and plant later. So that's going to be our theme today. So next let's plan around our pink syngonium, which I'm thinking I'm going to do underneath the white aglaonema, so this will be on the bottom left. So I'd really love this in that area. And then I'm thinking, you know, I think I might rather do a skindapsis on the bottom on in this area because I think that might have a little bit more, you know, color. So I might switch out the skindapsis on the top left for maybe just the philodendron or maybe the Brazil philodendron because that might look good with the pop of color. So I think I'm gonna do this and Maybe I'll use some philodendron. Ooh, this is a tough decision. I think I have it all planned out. 
and I was able to include everything except the Bonnie spider plant. So I'm gonna share with you guys what I think and then I'll kind of piece it out on the floor and we can kind of see how it's all looking. And then we can decide finally if we're gonna go ahead and actually plant it all up. Alrighty, so as soon as I set it up, I am noticing that I have two Hartley philodendrons right here and Pothos literally almost all around the outside. So I'm thinking about doing a little swap so I might remove the pothos from up there and then disperse it with the other ones and then remove this Hartley philodendron, move it up to the top right, and then put the spider bonnie there. So that's kind of what I think I'm going to try out right now. So I'm going to do a little swap and then I'll be right back with you guys to see if that works out. I did exactly what I said. I moved some of that philodendron up there. I put the spider bonnie up there and I kind of dispersed that other pothos around and I even decided to put just a few small pieces in right here so I think that'll be some really nice contrast all across the board we have some nice similarities while well, some nice contrast at the same time so I'm really excited to see how this is gonna look so we are going to go ahead and finally plant it all up we're gonna start off by planting the planter that inspired me to do this whole project in general actually I don't know if it was really this that inspired me or more so this dying marble queen <laughs> but I'm starting off by just making a little bit of mix so I'm just adding quite a bit of perlite to my mixture, as I mentioned. I do want this to be a very well aerated mix specifically because there is no drainage hole. However, the Wally Groves are able to breathe, so I haven't had an issue of root rot myself in the past year of having it, although I could see that being an issue if you do have a heavy hand. So while I'm a total spoon gardener, a spoon is not going to suffice today, so I am going to need to upgrade to a plastic pot. <laughs> so. That's going to be our trowel today. It's going to do a very good job, I am sure of it. So I have a very a large amount of pothos that's accumulating in front of me up here. And I'm going to pull back here. And I'm just going to start off by filling up my Wally Grows a little bit of the way, probably like a third of the way with some soil to get started. If I was thinking a little bit harder when I was at the plant shop earlier, I probably would have picked up a bag of horticultural charcoal to put as a bottom layer in here. But as I had mentioned, I really have had no issue with this planter not having any drainage, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, I have about a third of a layer, or a third of the way filled up with soil inside the Wally Grow Eco. I'm going to get my one, my star of the show here, and I'm going to gently nurse it out of its pot. Oh, we got some really good roots. So from the way that the roots on the golden pothos were looking, which were really good, I'm really happy to see some good roots on this plant too. So we're gonna have a lot of good roots going into this mix. So I feel like we're going to have a strong growing green ball. Well, that is the goal, to have a flourishing vertical garden. I'm just gently teasing the roots a little bit and removing just a very, very small amount of soil, but obviously to save on the amount of soil I use in this planting, I am not removing a whole lot of soil. So I think I like this level that we're at. It seems like we're gonna be about an inch below. I might add just a tad bit more to raise it like a centimeter. All right, that's good. I am thrilled already. I could just plant this and I would be happy. But we're gonna do a little bit of extra today. So I'm going to get my philodendron Brazil and once again, nurse it out of its plastic nursery pot right here. And ooh, some good roots on this one too. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a tease once again and place this one where I want it, which is right here. This one is going to need a little bit more soil to raise it up. I like having the camera here that I can see what I'm doing from the other side. I mean, I guess I would normally be planting this the opposite way if I wasn't filming it, but I just like having this point of view. So I'm liking this. I'm gonna add a little bit more soil over here just to keep things in place. And also probably just dig a little bit more up over here because I'm remembering how many roots, or how voluptuous more so, some of these roots are on my golden pothos, as you can see. So they're gonna want a little bit of space to grow. So let's start off with some of these longer vines. I like the way that they're kind of curling in, so they're probably leaning towards the light, but for the next short amount of time, they will be, you know, fulfilling a purpose of look here in my vertical garden. As well as using long vines, I want to use shorter pieces too to kind of fill it up from the top. And I have one more piece to add in. And we are going to do the final stages of filling soil up in this Wally Eco. I never normally plant things together like this. I'm very much a 
minimalist in a sense. I'm not a minimalist in my home, as you guys can always tell, obviously, but I'm more of a minimalist when it comes to planting plants, and I like them to just be one in a pot by themselves. I don't even really like to have any, like, succulent gardens in my home. I think I have one plant in my home that has two different plants in the same pot, so that's not really my thing. Maybe when I'm needing to save a little bit more harshly on space, that will become my thing. But that was kind of my thinking when it comes to this vertical garden. It's in my home right now, specifically right now, I'm at a point where I really have to think twice before I bring another plant home because I just really do not have any surface space where I gotta think creatively if I am putting new plants around my home about how I can hang them or how I can put them on the wall or something like that. So I figured this vertical garden would be a great way for me to bring in a large amount of plants and then just display it all in one small section of space. All right, so I think we are done planting our first Wally Grow planter. So as you can see, the pothos vines go very far down, but if we bring it back down, we have a really, really nice assortment and I'm loving it. Oh my gosh, this is like exactly what I was going for. I'm obsessed with the way the ugly enamel looks from below. So yeah, one out of four complete. So let's get started with the next one. I'm really excited to see how this one is going to look. So we are going to get started with planting this one next. So once again, as I did for the last one, I am going to fill up my logos about a third to half of the way with soil, depending on how, what kind of plants I'm working with. If I was using six inch plants that were very, very root bound, I'd probably start with just about an inch of soil in here. But today I'm going a different route with our arrangement. Okay, so I think I want this to be maybe back a little bit and I might have the spider plant up in the front is what I'm kind of thinking, like poking off. Then I can have the skindapsis kind of filling out here. Skindapsis, get you in there. Ooh, that's looking good already. Let's get a little bit more soil up here, raise it up a little bit. Nicholas is happy with the way this one is starting out. And just get these runaway vines a little deeper in there and yes okay i love the pink with this bluish silver color it's really really popping in the best way so of course now we're going to stick our spider plant in our body spider oh my gosh the roots on this thing if this thing doesn't flourish i swear i'm gonna be so mad it's just got so much white in the leaves i'm kind of worried that it's just not going to be enough light but We'll see, it's not that far from a west window. It's just far off enough that, and high up enough for I'm just a little, a little wary. That is good, okay. And these pothos have very, very small roots, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and start filling up back here. Last but not least, before it gets too full, let's put in our little tiny pothos pieces to fill in this side. I don't really do that many projects like this at home. I'm kind of more about doing this at work because I don't have to buy all the plants and I get to just kind of mess around with it. So today was kind of like an, okay, we've been doing this enough, let's go home and do it. So I am really excited to see what the final product is as I keep saying because ooh, with this second one pretty much done, I am feeling really good about this vertical garden. So I love the skindapsis right here. This is gonna get really, really long, as will the pothos, and then the spider plant should put off babies. And the syngonium in the back, oh my god, you guys. <laughs> gotta keep it cool, because we still gotta do two more planters. Time for number three. So we got this big philodendron right here, and this lovely aglianema ruby, or wishes, whatever we are calling it now and another Scandapsus pictus, because you cannot have enough of these things in your home, I swear. For the third time, filling it up a third of the way to a half of the way, depending on how deep my plants are. I was kind of thinking at first, like, oh, I'll just like film like me, like planting up like one of the planters, but then I was like, wait, it's, your video is gonna be called planting up your vertical garden. So I probably should show the whole planting. So I hope this isn't too excessive, but we're, we're in for the long haul today. Like all the soil fell off this egg, so probably wasn't the smartest one to do first, but I just love the red color. I'm really excited to once again be looking up at this, so maybe keeping that in mind, I should turn it on a different angle. I think I like this one. I think, I think I'm good with it. Maybe I'll just lean it forward a little bit. Very unrelated, but I 
kind of just want to tell you guys it's kind of funny but like also not really i live on the second floor here and i'm very close to downtown philadelphia <laughs> the amount of honks and loud trucks and buses and things like that that go by and loud music every time i'm filming and i have to stop and start over phenomenal so when i move which hopefully there we go which hopefully is not for a while when i move I'm definitely looking to move up a little bit higher because one, the light might be a little bit more adequate, which my light in my space is perfect, which is why I'm not going to be moving out of here for a few years. But I could really do without all of these honks if I'm gonna be making YouTube videos for a while. So these things are incredible. I love the red with the, the blue. I also, like I said, I love the pink with the blue. So we got a lot of colors going on today and I'm really, really stoked about that. I think this is looking really phenomenal already. I don't wanna to toot my own horn. But I gotta thank Sue once again for her creative eye because this is just looking fabulous. This is getting so much easier as I go. I feel like I remember this being like so time consuming when I did it last time, but this is very therapeutic. Planting for me has definitely become one of the most therapeutic things I can do. And I feel like I'm taking liberty the fact that I just told you guys about the sounds that happen outside and I'm letting this truck go by and not doing anything. But I just over the last few years sitting down and planting, it's like, you can imagine, I go to work for eight hours a day, maybe sometimes nine, depending on what time of year that we're open. And I work with plants all day. I order plants, I have plants come in, I sell plants, I plant plants. There's a lot of planting going on, which is a dream, but you know, some people don't like to necessarily do their job at home, but I love it. I get to come home and be with my plants, which is always very relaxing compared to some of the plants in the shop and then sometimes some of the people that I deal with. So this is just a dream. Like I said as well that I don't normally do projects like this in my home since I do have that liberty to, to have a place of work where I could mess around and do something like this whether or not it was for a client. So I am definitely happy and very grateful to be able to stretch my creativity like that so i'm also very excited to be bringing a project like this home okay probably one of the less busy ones that we have going on but i just absolutely love the subtleness and the colors that we have and it's going to look really nice with the white ag and then the red aglianema so really thrilled so far as i've said every single time I'm not unhappy yet so let's go ahead and finish up this last planter so in here we have a lot of pothos our beautiful Siam Aurora Aglianema, which is just a cutting, but it's rooted, so hopefully it takes pretty well. This Dracaena, this is called Dracaena Bicolor with a piece of philodendron attached, and of course, some more Hartley philodendron. So this is gonna be a pretty busy one, but a lot of red, so I'm really excited to see how this one looks. For the fourth and final time, I'm going to fill my Welly Grow Panther roughly a third to a half of the way with my soil. So once again, I'm going to start off with this focal piece, which for today is going to be this Dracaena bicolor, which is how it was sold to me as. So it's going to be a nice tuft coming up, which I think will look nice in contrast to the philodendron and the pothos coming down. And I think I'll have the Siam Aurora kind of just like poking out in front here. So maybe I'll turn it this way. Yeah, I'm going to turn it this way. All right, getting this philodendron in there. And since this is all we're putting on this side, I'm gonna add our soil in. Ooh, that looks cute. That looks really cute. Ah, I love it. I've been really into the red aglianemas lately. I only have the red emerald other than this little cutting that's in here, but they're just so exciting. They're just such a wonderful way to add some color into your home and they work really well in your low light spaces. They definitely, the red aglianemas definitely need a little bit more light than the green aglianemas. Same with the white aglianema or Chinese evergreen that I have in the first planter that I did up. So I just got to keep that in mind. But besides that, I think that these are going to do pretty well in the space that I'm giving them. So I just made a little bit of room for the pothos since the roots are pretty insane. Pull that one out. Nestle this in. Okay, it took a little wrestling with this pothos to 
to get me in a place where I felt happy about it. <laughs> but I am really loving this way this is looking. I love all the reds. I'm loving the green with it. Of course, all of our plants are green, except the ones that aren't. Okay, we are officially done planting up our green wall until unless I keep finding things to nitpick at, but I think it is looking really, really good. So I am going to stop and I'm gonna water all of these first and foremost. And I think I might've mentioned at the beginning, but there's this little water reservoir in the back. So I just fill it up with water. I let it suck it up and I usually fill it up like one and a half or maybe two times, but I don't usually do any more than that because I don't want to overwater these. As I said, they don't have any drainage holes, but they do a pretty good job at breathing. And that's why I added a little bit of extra perlite to really help these plants breathe. Finally, all the planting is done for my vertical garden and I just water them, so it's time to put them up on the wall. I just want to show you guys kind of the coolest part about the wall I grow, pardon, as I move the camera up a moment. So you can see the four little prongs, if you will, that I have on the wall, and that is where I can slip the wall grows over. So if I don't really like how they're looking or if I want to try out a different scenario for light and whatnot, I can move my wall grows all around and see what looks best for me and just keep it fresh, if you will. So I'm excited to have the option now that I have more of a smorgasbord of plants rather than just kind of set pattern than I did before. So I'm definitely going to be utilizing it this time around. So let's go ahead and put these plants up on the wall. It looks so good, I'm so happy. I'm loving the way it looks. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this video. I had such a great time putting it all together. If I had to say one thing, I think I would have rather used some longer vines already to fill in this space right here, but I know that the Philodendron Brazil and the Scandapsis will fill it out in no time. So I am not worried about that. That's just something I should have thought about earlier, but it's okay. I'm loving the pops of color. I love the pink, I love the reds, and I love the white. I love that each box has a space that is catching my eye. It's very important. That's something that Sue told me is very important. So as I said, she helped me out a lot in this process. So I'm very excited to have this vertical garden hopefully thriving here in my space. So let's see how it does. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on this video. Be sure to use my code phillyfullyh15 if you want to get 15% off your own while I grow ecos and do a living wall of your own in your own home. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at phillyfullyh, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.